Hey guys and welcome to the last video on this PC Build for 2018 video series and in this particular one we will not have any unboxing and so on we will go straight into it for those of you that have missed the previous videos I will leave a link down below so that you can follow up and check all the components I will leave a link uh, down below as well for the components so that you can take a look at them and so on and so forth. Now in this particular video the question is simple is it worth it to overclock the i7-8700K which is the CPU that I'm using and my opinion guys is that it's not and I will share with you why I've got this opinion. It's not based on this particular CPU it's based on the CPUs that I've had on the past as well and I've had quite a few. If you ask me hey Robert but you purchase the K version always yes I've had uh, in the past always the K version but at the end of the day once I do all the tests and so on and so forth I put it to stock and I use it as it is like I've been doing in the past and like I will be doing with this particular case. So if you ask me hey Robert so why did you buy the K version when the non-K version are cheaper? It's just the geek inside of me that leads me to do this. I want to test it for myself to see the results and then uh, ultimately share with the community but I would say right now if you guys are looking for save some money then it's not a bad idea to uh, consider the 8700 no K version which is at this moment roughly 70 euros cheaper. You want to find out why then give me a few minutes and I will explain why. And let's start by taking a look at something which is a real world performance test and I'm using After Effects which is the software that I use most of my time and using one of my templates which is the Dramatic Film Strip Photos. I will leave a link down below for my portfolio so that you guys can take a look and with this particular CPU known overclockable I can render this template in 12 minutes and 26 seconds as you guys can see on screen no overclock at all which is great as I shared on the last video compared with my old CPU which was the i7-477K and right now I'm getting half the time that I was getting. Now when I do overclock the CPU up to 5 GHz which is the maximum I will get a rendering time of 12 minutes so this is a 30 seconds in improvement and it's not bad at all but I will talk a little bit more about that in just a few moments. Now getting to the overclock part guys it's not a problem with the CPU cooler because I can get really low temperatures for this particular case. We are talking about 60 degrees Celsius up to 70 but uh, if I use a higher profile or a more aggressive profile on the CPU cooler I will get 60 degrees there uh, without any issues at all. So the problem is exactly on the CPU which uh, on the silicon draw I was unlucky. There are people doing a lot more, well, well not a lot but 5.1, 5.2 I haven't seen much more than that stable and there are people doing less. Taking this to the real world performance once again uh, we saw that we would save for every 12 minutes of rendering we would save 30 seconds and you guys might say okay Robert that's nothing but if we use a longer project we, we can save a lot more time. And looking again at a real world situation let's say that I've got a project that will take roughly 12 hours to uh, render and in that particular case overclocking the CPU will save me uh, in the ballpark of 24 to 26 minutes more or less. Now I've had in the past situations that I had to render long projects that took 8, 10, 12 hours and all those situations what I did was when I finished everything I put the file to render and just leave it there go to sleep and the next day I went to the computer and then uh, send the file to whatever I had to send and that's about it. What would you do with those extra 25 or 26 minutes that you had? Nothing guys, I would probably be eating my breakfast and so on and so forth and that's the real world performance test that I can share with you and my opinion is it's not worth it. So let's take a step back and for those of you that are on the fence hey, should I get the 8700K or the 8700? My opinion at this moment as I mentioned before is probably a best price to performance you will get it on the i7 87 no K 8700 no K. 
On the other hand, if you are a geek like me, then probably the 8700K will be the only one that will satisfy, or the i5-8600K, which is not a bad choice, probably more balanced, uh, better performance for the price that you pay, and so on and so forth. Guys, I'm not going to delay much more this video. If you still have any questions, just drop them down below. If you have a different opinion than mine, then leave it down below. I would love to hear uh, some feedback from those of you that love to overclock, and at the end of the day, that they can get a real-world uh, positive experience that they can benefit from that overclock and not just tell me that hey i'm getting two more frames per second on gta or something like that which to me and once again i'm not a gamer but to me sounds like a negligible thing like the 30 seconds that i have on after effects to me it's negligible and that is it guys let's finish up this video hopefully it's useful for some of you guys out there my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you on the next one Thank you.